welcome to our winter sleeping bag live. We're here to give away some sleeping bags and tell you about specials and answer all your questions about why to use a winter sleeping bag. So sit back, make a cup of tea, oh, I hope you've got your cup of tea already, um, and yeah, fire away your questions and we'll get to those if um, we get a chance through the live and definitely um, we'll do FAQ at the end and answer all of your questions um, on the feed afterwards. So let's get started. We've um, launched our first winter sleeping bag special on the website. 20% off all winter weight bags and that's live now James, is it live that's now? Live. 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 So it's pretty rare for us to do a winter weight duvet uh, special into wool babes so if you want just one 20 percent it's a good deal snap it up now and i think we're running these specials through until sunday midnight so you've just got a few days to get 20 percent off wool babe so it's just on sleeping bags we're talking about today so the 20 percent doesn't cover our duvet sleeping suits they're just about sold out again so the special doesn't cover those also in the sleeping bag specials we have all of our um, bags for day naps are all on special too so they um, go up to 50% off so that's your sort of um, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, one top bags which are your kind of year round weights. So first question that we got asked about is why should you use a sleeping bag? So there's lots of reasons. The first reason and during the winter to use a sleeping bag is to keep your babies warm. Babies and toddlers, lots of people use a sleeping bag right up to age three, sometimes even four or five, but it's common to use a sleeping bag at least until age two. So during the, um, the winter, a sleeping bag um, is wearing, is having your baby wearing their bedding. So this is a duvet weight wool babe, so it's really just similar to having a duvet that goes all around your baby and can't get kicked off. So no more waking up cold during the night and then you rushing out of your co your nice warm bed into their cold bedroom and tucking your child back in. So warmth and consistency and your peace of mind is the first reason. The second reason um, with little babies is safety. So when your babies are wriggling, they can end up with the bedding. I've got a blanket here. So if your baby's not in a sleeping bag and you tuck them in, like this, um, potentially, and I did see a photo online a couple of days ago of one of our customers whose baby was every night was wriggling like this, and yep, sure it could be a breathable blanket, but it's still over your baby's face. So you don't want the bedding over your baby, and you don't want the bedding being kicked off and baby wakes up cold. And then the third reason um, for a sleeping bag is routine and telling your baby that it means it's bedtime. So that's called a sleep association. So when you zip your baby into their bag, they know it's time for bed, they know it's time to stay in bed. Um, and then when you're sleeping away from home, whether it's you know at childcare or somewhere for the weekend or in the evening at you know your parents' house or whatever, the sleeping bag says it's bedtime. So as children sleep in familiar you know, sleeping bag over time, that becomes a very powerful message that it's time for sleep. So that's your three reasons for a sleeping bag. One is your peace of mind, that your child's warm all night. Second, that they're safe. Um, and third, the sleep association. So let's get on. And then when can um, baby start using a sleeping bag was one of the questions that we got emailed or messaged somewhere. So sleeping bags can be used from newborn. So if we have a look at um, like a tiny little sleeping bag, like this really adorable little one, um, these can be used from newborn. You know, not for a little tiny prem, but from a normal full term sort of um, six, seven pound baby, this would be fine. Another popular option for new babies, oops, <laughs> about that, um, is these adorable little Ergo um, swaddle sleep bags. So it's got, you can use it as a swaddle, but it's really a sleeping bag. So when we surveyed our customers recently, 75% swaddle, 25% don't swaddle. So swaddling is, you know, is more common, but it's not essential. If your baby sleeps fine, you know, with their arms out, then just go with a sleeping bag. 
and we always recommend you go for a sleeping bag over loose bedding because as your child gets bigger you know you can have consistency around their bedding and you avoid the you know loose blankets over the face and the bedding getting kicked off so in answer to your question sleeping bags can be used from newborn then we had um, a question around babies rolling on their tummy while in a sleeping bag and do they have um, will they get stuck or will they be able to roll back and forth depends on what sleeping bag and what age your child's using it um, generally if you know babies can roll back and forth um, you know they're safe to do so we normally would say babies should not tummy sleep till maybe you know nine months to be conservative but if your baby's six months and they can roll back and forth and back and forth and lift push up all of those things then they're going to choose to sleep in that position there's not much you can do about it um, but once your baby is rolling it's very important that you drop any kind of swaddling and you just have a sleeping bag and nothing else in the cot in terms of um, you know restricting movement a heavier bag like the duvet wool babe can restrict movement and that's why a lot of people like it. it does make it harder to roll means your baby's more likely to stay on their back and stay in one place but it won't stop rolling some people find for the first few days that they have a duvet wool babe if it's quite a lot heavier than what they've been using or if they haven't used any sleeping bag it will take baby a few days to get used to it um, softer bags like our two layer merino bags um, you know they're soft like a blanket so this is like a duvet this is like a blanket so it's very soft so this will be you know very flexible easy to roll in the duvet wool waves a little bit harder to roll in but still completely possible you know just might take a day or two to get used to it uh, sleeping bags can be very helpful for stopping the legs getting out the cot bars and often um, movement around the cot is one of the reasons people start to use a sleeping bag because their baby's crawling out from the blankets and all around and doing laps of the cot and ending up you know jammed in the corner so a sleeping bag might reduce a bit of that crazy movement but it will also mean that baby's warm wherever they end up after their tour of the cot okay so my next instruction is to tell you um, the key safety the key features of a sleeping bag so the key features of a sleeping bag really are the fabric it's made of the sort of zip whether it has domes whether it has a slot for the buggy and so on so I'll just go through some examples of the key features of sleeping bags so let's look first at the fabric options so this is a hundred percent merino bag hundred percent merino is warm lightweight very soft and flexible um, not as warm as a duvet wool babe so this is a good sort of mid weight class as a winter weight bag but it's not as warm as this is our warmest bag so if you have a look at these and I can you zoom in I don't want to upset the focus <laughs> but this is two layers soft 100% merino so very good for regulating temperature very good for um, changing the weight by adding more or less clothes it's a very very versatile bag if you've had one of our two layer merino bags before this season is not quite as warm as last year's so the lining this year is 180 grams rather than 280 the outside's the same 200 um, the price of merino went up quite astronomically and if we'd stuck with the same weight as last year the bag would have literally been $50 more this year and we thought that was a bit much <laughs> so if you're wanting super warm the duvet wool babe is still your best bet so another option in the 100% merino is the lovely bag from Babu which is similar weight to ours two layers of 100% merino um, so our ones are a um, front zip and Babu's are a side zip and they're really nice wide bags so a good option if you have your baby in a hip brace or some kind of harness the Babu ones are great for that um, in our 100% merino bags we have three colours this year which we hope you love we love them quite a lot those are our three 100% merino bags 
Okay, so just to compare those with a wool babe. So you may or may not know that wool babe is our brand as well. We've um, owned the wool babe brand for about seven or eight years now. And these are sleep store bags. So these are available exclusively from the sleep store. Wool babes are available from us and from lots of other boutiques and online stores. So you will see them hopefully everywhere now. So the sizing on our two bags is very similar. Uh, 3 to 24 months, 2 to 4 years, and then also the Merino ones come in a 0 to 6, and the Wool Babes come in a 0 to 9 month. Um, so the difference in terms of the fabric in a Wool Babe, so inside a Duvet Wool Babe, this is organic cotton, so it's really smooth, percale fabric, like a sheet, so very good for sensitive skin, very smooth, very easy to care for. Um, merino bags, you do have to be super careful with your liquid wool wash. Um, yeah, merino bags, you need to be very careful of um, moths because they can eat holes in this, but you almost never hear of moth holes in a wool bag because of the cotton fabric. Um, so, organic cotton on the inside, quilted, and then the weight, the duvetness of the duvet wool babe, that is merino filling so it's if you imagine a wool duvet on your bed it's like that but around your baby and then this wool fab this fabric on the outside of a wool babe is 70 percent organic cotton and 30 percent merino our wool babe um, blend is made especially for us isn't it no one else it is that. it is our special blend and it actually the um the ordering time for wool babe um it takes six months from when we place an order until when the stock arrives at our door so it takes a long time to have the fabric made specially and the quilting done and all the different components that go into a wool babe take a really long time so when we sold out of our um <laughs> new colours, some people are shouting for some more, I said that's absolutely fine, you can have them in September, <laughs> a bit of a shame. So if you missed out on the Ko-Fi or the Midnight, they will be back in time for the spring. Um, so other fabric compositions, um, if, if you get sort of down um, a price point or two, generally sleeping bags and kind of um, you know budget bags that are sold in kind of chain stores or you know discount kind of shops those kind of sleeping bags will generally be cotton on the outside um, and they will have the filling will be polyester so you know our preference would always be that you choose a hundred percent natural fiber sleeping bag so either a hundred percent merino or filled with merino and with cotton those the merino bags will help your baby's temperature um, regulate through the night um, you, your baby will be far less likely to overheat or be too cold and they won't end up sort of cold and clammy and sweaty um, but merino and merino filled bags obviously are a bit of a higher price because the components are so much more expensive so um, if you want a merino or a wool bay bag and your budget's really tight check with our outlet store you can email the outlet store to see what's available um, and also wool babes are often available second hand um, and they hold their value well and their quality is so good that I actually had someone write to me the other day and say that they were not sure if their wool babe was going to last their fifth child <laughs> so I thought oh, you've done really well with four children with your wool babe so I'm getting sidetracked from my We've list. also got a way of, of paying in instalments Yes, you can use part pay, exactly. Part pay for New Zealand and zip pay for Australia. And later in the year, we'll finally be getting after pay when we get our new website. Um, but anyway, back to the fabric composition. So a, a Bonds winter bag or a Plum winter bag or a Grow bag, they're all filled with polyester. Benefits of polyester filling is that they're reasonably priced and they're very easy to look after and they're very quick to dry so generally polyester um, filled bags can be washed up to 40 degrees they're not really suitable for a super hot wash if you wash any baby products in a really hot wash you risk them shrinking but 40 degrees warm wash um, and they will dry really quickly compared to any of these 100 percent natural options Ergo Pouch is another of our very popular brands and they are made from um, organic cotton and they're filled with bamboo, so a bamboo wadding. 
so yeah there's different options um, so the ergo pouch is kind of mid price 100% natural but they don't have the merino that the wool babe and the sleep store and the baboo have then one of our next um, questions that we get all the time is front zip or side zip so sleeping bags always have a zip that's how you get the baby in and out my preference always is the front zip because there's less to do when you put the baby in so watch we've got our baby here so can you see this one from here from this angle yep we got it I'll just get this one out so this is a front zip wool babe to do up a front zip wool babe take the top close it at the top and zip it down so you don't want to have it like you don't want to be zipping the bottom zip and leaving the zip pull loose at the top close it here and zip it down so this just means if you need to get into change a nappy or if you're using the buggy slot you can access that so close it at the top and zip down so it's very quick and easy to put baby into We also make our wool babes in a side zip um, and some of the other brands, the plum and the grow bags are also side zip. So generally these will have snaps on the shoulders, one or both shoulders. So there's like four snaps and the zip. So my preference always is the quickness um, and the security of the front zip. A very determined baby can you know, learn to pop those shoulder snaps. But it is totally personal preference whether you go front or side. Probably about 70% of our customers go for front, 30 side, just there's a rough split. Another feature that you'll find on a lot of sleeping bags is some way of making the armholes a little bit smaller. So on our wool babes and our sleep store bags, they have this little tab with a little snap. And it just for a baby when they first move into that size, it just makes the chest a little smaller and it makes the armhole a little smaller. So for a 3 to 24 month bag, you might use those snaps for the first maybe 3 months, so up to about a 6 month old, and then after that you don't need them. Some people never use them, some people use them um, until their baby's kind of bursting out of it, but you'll just know if you feel like you need it to be a little bit snugger. And then one other feature I'll show you is the buggy slot. Just I've got a new one with safety message on it. Oh, have you seen this? So beautiful. This is our new midnight stars. I love it. Okay, so the feature I'm going to show you now is what's called a buggy slot. So some sleeping bags um, have a slot at the back. Okay, so this is a buggy slot. It's a slot in the back that you can put a five-point harness from a push chair through there. Straps come over the baby's shoulder and then the buckle comes up through this side. Um, so our wool babes have that feature. What else has got it? Babu have it. And I think that's about it. So just Wool Babe and Babu at the moment in our range have the buggy slot. Oh, and our Nature Baby bags, but we don't really have any winter weight ones. We just have summer and mid-weight Nature Baby bags. So this is a useful feature to have if you are often out and about with your child in the buggy and you want them to have a nap. So if you remember back to why use a sleeping bag, sleep association. Um, if you've got, say, two kids, you're taking one out, you want the baby to go to sleep in the push chair. It's really useful for that, but I will just draw your attention to the safety message here. Not for use in cars, only for buggies. And there's a lot of um, sleeping bag brands which are still promoting the buggy slot as safe for use in car seats. And so um, we take every opportunity to remind you that it's a buggy slot. It's not for car seats because in a crash, the um, force on the car seat harness is going to squish this down flat and you won't have buckled the child in tight enough. So when, when that pressure comes on, the harness will be too loose and your child could fly out of the car seat. So, you know, it's really 
everybody should be getting on board with that safety message, but they're not. But anyway, that's our safety message. So you can use your bags in a buggy, but not in the car seat. Same applies at this time of the year um, for bulky jackets. So things like puffer jackets are a good example. Um, you wouldn't probably be having your baby in a puffer jacket, but you might have your toddler in a puffer jacket. Um, you think you've done up the car seat really tight, but then in a crash, it will crush down to nothing and the seat belt will be miles too, too loose. So any bulky jackets, puffer jackets, snow suits, um, rain wear, take all of it off before you buckle your child in. That's really getting off track. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting lots of entries? Are you all entering for that wool babe? Got lots of entries happening. Good. Okay, I'm just checking my list. Okay, so we had... Um, we had a question here about um, how do we choose what sleeping bags we have in our range. So really, um, we try to have a broad range of prices for starters because everybody, you know, has different budgets to spend on something like a sleeping bag. Some people will invest in the best possible bag if they can, which is obviously a wool babe or a sleep store bag. <laughs> but our, um, our wool babes have won gold medal last year and it's very established and probably now New Zealand's most popular sleeping bag is the duvet wool babe. I'll say that with pride. Um, so yeah, but if you, have, if you can't invest in the best and you need something um, that fits your budget, or if you're looking for a backup bag to send to daycare or whatever, um, you know, you might be looking at a fraction of the price of one of these. So we try to cover all of the price ranges without going to the point where we're selling really budget bags that are crap. We still, no matter what price our bags are, they still have to do the job. They still have to be safe. They still have to be tested to the safety standard. Um, they still have to meet all the labelling requirements. The fabric still has to be good quality so it stands up to washing and wearing. And then all of the components like the snaps and the zip have to last the distance. So a wool babe, we'd heard before, um, will last you for four children, <laughs> maybe not five. Um, whereas a, you know, a basic little cheapy bag, you know, might last you for one season. The, the zip isn't as good a quality, the fabric's a bit thinner, those sorts of things. So, you know, buy the best bag you can. You're going to use it for, you know, up to three sleeps a day for years and years and years, but choose the right one for you. And then other things, yeah, we just really choose sleeping bags that we can stand behind and when we sell them to you, um, we know it's going to be a good investment for you, sort of no matter where it sits in that price range. And we also like, wherever possible, um, to have bags that somebody in our team's used. So, you know, we've got um, almost all of our staff, apart from I think a couple of our, our youngest ones down in the customer services, most people have got kids, so lots of our team have tried lots of our products. So, you know, we know how they work and we know how they last, and we know how they wash and wear. These things are important when you're selling to other parents. Okay, let's answer some more of your questions. Angela Beaumont asked us, what's the main difference between the Ergo Pouch swaddle sleeping bags and the rest of the ergo pouch range so I will just um, tidy up <laughs> and I'll just show you the ergo pouch range because I'm sure lots of other people would like to see that too and if there's any other questions to do with the fabrics or the zips or the snaps or any of those feature kind of things send those through now so while I just um, get the ergo pouches out I'll answer any questions that you give to James Question that might be over the patch about the tog difference. Tog difference? In yeah. general between sleeping bags. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get these out without getting them out because they're really ridiculous packaging with bows and string and all the stuff. Okay. I should have just got them all out. <laughs> oh, we did have a question about whether you can use a sleeping bag with a wool underlay, and the answer is of course. <laughs> Feel how fluffy our wool underlays are. So this is our sleep store wool underlay. So it's firm and smooth cotton on one side and then it's fluffy wool fleece on the other. So with, we say from six months because before six months while your babies are still in the SIDS risk age group, you should really have a firm flat surface. This is pretty flat. 
but we're a bit conservative with our recommendations. But from six months you can use this side or the other side. And what's on this side, Lou, with the wool? With the wool? Yeah. It's wool. It is wool, isn't it? Because there's a few things yeah. out there that are not wool that look like wool. Yeah, no, this is 100% wool. It's not like a sheepskin, which traps dust mites, and they're extremely fluffy and soft, and um, oh, they just give me the heebie-jeebies. My kids are allergic to dust mites. and <laughs> The thought of never being able to wash it is a bit gross. But these are machine washable. It's wool fleece. It's, um, it's either English or French wool. Um, that's, that our factory uses and it's, it's put into, it's a very fine kind of um, mesh that the wool, so it's super secure, you can see it if you zoom in here, so that there is not wool, but everything that's here is wool and then this is cotton, cotton wadding and then cotton um, backing. So they're totally machine washable, which for any kind of leakage that your child might wish to do, they do come in um, big bed sizes too, so you know, for kids who wet the bed, they shouldn't miss out on a wool underlay, but mum and dad sure don't want to have to dry clean it. Anyway, so here we are um, with our Ergo Pouch range. So this is the Ergo Pouch um, Swaddle Sleeping Bag. So it has the snaps to have it like a sleeping bag. Not like a sleeping bag. <laughs> like a swaddle. Like a swaddle! I must have missed my morning coffee. And the excitement of getting ready for the live. Right, that's better. Okay, so this you can see it's like a little swaddle. It's little and it's cute. This is the zero to three month size. It also comes in a two to six and a three to twelve month size. So you can snap the armholes closed and wear it like a swaddle. And then when your baby starts to transition from swaddling, you can have one or both arms out. It's one tog on the top and 2.5 on the bottom. Also comes in other lighter weights. So that's the kind of, um, if you want to swaddle and then move into a sleeping bag, or if you want to use a sleeping bag right from day one and you've got a really little baby, that would be so cute. Then the Ergo Pouch do just a normal sleeping bag. So this is stretchy cotton, um, just comes in eight to 24 months, 2.5 tog, like this stretchy all over and then they also have their range which are smooth woven cotton and then with stretchy panels down the side and these come in a range of um, 2.5, 3.5 tog and they also come in, this is the convertible one that turns into a sleep suit with legs or a sleeping bag and it has arms and then there's one that's in between which doesn't have the arms or converts, it's just a normal sleeping bag, also comes in 2.5 or 3.5. So Ergo Pouch is a very big range, and we do love them, they're very good quality. Don't sell any product sleeping bags with sleeves for little babies, because one of the ways that children, babies, cool down is from under their arms, and so while babies are still in that zero to six month SIDS risk, um, you really, really have to watch for overheating, so no hats, no bonnets, no matter how cute they look on Instagram, no bonnets, no hats, um, and no bags with sleeves until they're out of that six month, first six months. If you're still here, you're amazing. Thank you for watching. Hope I've answered some of your questions. Okay, that was the next one, Sally Grant. So Angela and Sally, who asked about Ergo Pouch, let me know if I didn't answer your questions. Okay, the next lot of questions relate to the size of the sleeping bag. So let's just use these um, sleep store bags to give you some size comparisons. Oops, I'm just about losing that one off the fluffy underlay. So this is a 3 to 24. It's about um, between 95 and 100 centimetres long. Can't for the life of me remember how long that is, about 70 centimetres or something. So this is comparing the 0 to 6 with the 3 to 24. So you can see when, when our bags are, get bigger, they get bigger everywhere. They get bigger in the chest, the armholes get longer, and the length gets longer. So the first criteria with choosing a bag is that it's a safe fit. If you buy it too big, it potentially will be unsafe because the neck hole will be too big, um, your baby could end up down in the bag, um, or they can get tangled in the bag. One of the common questions we get um, is, can I just save some money and buy 
the biggest possible bag now. So I got asked a couple of days ago whether someone could buy a two to four year bag for their five month old baby. And if you see, that's almost as big as me. So no is the answer. It's got to be the right size for now and a bit in the future but you have to buy it so it's a safe fit. And also so your child, if we, one of our first questions was about children crawling around the cot and rolling and being mobile. If you buy a bag that's too big, it will really impede your child's ability to move in the cot and it will frustrate the heck out of them, which will likely result in screaming and you getting out of bed. So a good rule of thumb for a two to four year bag is that your child is in size two clothes. So if they're in size six months clothes, too big. So one year clothes, too big. When they're in size two clothes, this will be a good fit. It'll be a safe fit. It'll be not too long and getting tangled. Um, and you'll still get a lot of use from it. And our th um, three to 24 months in our wool babes or sleep store bags, you can see they're pretty generous. This is about a five month size fake baby. And its feet come too. Here. So plenty of use. Most children that we hear from will stay in this up until they're two years old. A very tall baby, you know, maybe 18 months, but we do design them sort of as big as possible without making them sort of ridiculously big for a little baby. But if you don't like the idea of the really long bag, if you find that that's too, um, too much, it, it, restricts your baby's movement um, or you just prefer something really little and cute then get one of these <laughs> so you can see the difference it's it's baby size it will last you probably at least six months or even a bit longer the equivalent wool babes are zero to nine months um, so you'll get lots of good use from it so for um if you've had a duvet wool babe and you've found that it's a bit too heavy and your baby's not wriggling around um, maybe just pop it away for a couple of months till they're a little bit taller um, or you know something like this that's smaller and softer is probably going to be a good option. Holly asks can you still use a bag with a safety sleep? Yes you can and that's what I did with my children I liked to know they were in one place and they couldn't go anywhere so your safety sleep wraps around sort of under the arm and it goes around that middle part of the baby probably the key thing to note is that the latest models of the safety sleep um, they have like a flap that goes up through the legs and it velcros in under the chest part. If you're using a sleeping bag, you can't use that leg strap. Um, so you just tuck it in under the bottom part of the safety sleep. And as long as you do this up nice and firm around the middle, that works very well. It's a very good combination of a, a wool babe and a safety sleep. I would say that if you're using a safety sleep, a um, 100% merino bag, is probably not going to be the best bet because the velcro on a safety sleep is very very grippy and it will grip to the merino and it will probably pull make pulls in your merino whereas something that's um, a tighter knit on the outside or a bag like this something like that's going to be better because of the velcro I did have quite a lot of pulls in my merino clothing from that Okay, so we've got um, quite a few questions around um, which of the warmest bags and what weight bag um, works for now. Should we cover those now? Sounds good. Okay, so duvet wool babe is definitely your warmest option for winter. I used to use this weight when my kids were little from probably in Auckland from probably April through to October. So it's quite a lot, even in Auckland, quite a lot of the year. I prefer to use a warmer bag and more layers of clothes and not rely on the heater because the heater can dry the air out quite a bit and you have to be mindful that the bedroom temperature doesn't get too high so um, we've got our little growy here it's saying it's 21.4 in here at the moment and at night that you'll be able to see it glows different colors so 16 to 20 is your kind of recommended temperature range 16 feels quite cold um, and below 16 can lead to respiratory illness if a child is constantly sleeping in that cold colder than that um, so around 18 to 20 is is our recommendation for a comfortable temperature so any of these um, weight of bags will work for that kind of 18 to 20 at um, 
18 to 20 you'll need you know one or two layers of clothes with this bag or this if you're using three seasons wool babe um, at 18 to 20 degrees you're going to need um, a little bit more clothing you could put something like a little merino suit and if it's colder than that a really little cute one you could put a thicker onesie inside a lighter weight bag. So that's quite a good way if you don't want to buy a really thick sleeping bag, you can put a lighter weight bag, mid-weight bag, but with a warmer weight of suit. Like that. That's not a very good demonstration. <laughs> too many layers and too many things. Like that. So yeah, your other really warm options would be um, any of the Ergo pouch that are 3.5 tog. They are very cosy. Um, and the grow bags and the plum that are 3.5 tog are also really warm. And then once you get down from those really winter weight bags, then you're getting into the two layer merino, you're getting into the 2.5 tog bags, and then below that you're getting into three season bags. The um, benefit of like a three season wool babe, two layer merino or getting into a one tog bag, they're a bit more versatile in terms of when you can use them, but at the middle of winter, we would always suggest you go for a winter weight, thick, heavy, chunky winter bag because you'll save less, save more on power um, and you won't have to layer up so much clothing. Okay. You're rocking through, right? Yep. Am I getting through the list? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well. so just a reminder here um, from James and Georgie that we've got lots of information on our website. So there's clothing guides, um, there's a guide to how to choose a sleeping bag, there's lots of tips there, and of course our customer service team um, through Facebook, Instagram, and if you phone them or email them, we can always help you pick. And also just a reminder to you, that's a growy which I had with my kids and love them. And then all of the good quality sleeping bags come with a room thermometer. So this is a grow, that's not a grow, it's a wool babe. I'm looking at the grow. <laughs> this is a wool babe room thermometer. So you can see it says 21 degrees, 21.4. So this is um, approximate, this is very precise. This one here says 22. So these, these ones are a guide. If you really want to know down to the nth degree, go for an egg. If you just want a rough guide where you say it's about 21 and then you can look on the back and there's a clothing guide of how many layers. If you are one of the sorts of parents that you want to know exactly what to do um, or you worry about the number of layers of clothing, I'd really recommend that you choose a bag that's 100% natural um, either a wool babe or a sleep store merino bag or a baboo merino bag because merino is really forgiving in terms of getting the temperature and the clothing right. If you have a polyester bag, polyester filled bag and you add too much clothing, your child will sweat and will get too hot whereas with the merino it just regulates the temperature and your child will be just right. So that's really good for your peace of mind as well. And also, I did see on my notes too, why don't we sell polar fleece bags? Because uh, they're gross. <laughs> they're made out of plastic. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Um, I was in a baby store the other day, one of the biggest brands of baby stores in New Zealand, and I walked in and right in the doorway were newborn size polar fleece sleep suits. And I just did feel a little Ooh. bit like... Because that's like putting a baby who can't regulate their temperature. It's like wrapping them in plastic. And that's just a recipe for overheating. So, yeah, choose natural fibres, definitely with little kids. When you get into sort of, you know, four or five-year-olds and they're wearing a onesie, they're fine with, you know, sweaty polyester. <laughs> My kids quite like a polyester blanket, but they're like 12, you know, so that's not an overheating danger when they're out, when they're bigger. Yes, so for the newborn ones, um, we've got the little merino ones this here. We have the odd, um, where's our grow bags? Oh, didn't have the grow bags. oh there were the other ones. Yeah, uh, just at the bottom there. I'm sure I got a grow bag out. Oh no, I hung it up. Oh. So some of the grow bags come in a zero to six month, which will be a side zip. 
and then the ergo cocoons so the ergo cocoons um, all come with the armholes so swaddle or sleeping bags so the winter weight one is quite quilted but they also come in a 0.2 and a one tog and then also in our love to dream range so we have we're probably New Zealand's only retailer that has all of the love to dream range and the 50 50 or transition bag um, love to dream the wings zip right off and so that turns it into a sleeping bag um, but that only covers from the three to six month size the medium love to dream so they don't really have a newborn option that have um, that you can take the arms off so I think yeah these would be our pick what about our um, mini wool babe? Somebody asks. Oh, mini wool babe. Do we have a mini wool babe here? Right here. There she is. Here's one I prepared earlier, but I just forgot about. I didn't really. That's the mini wool babe there. So similar size to this. So the mini wool babe is actually. Um, there's a number of projects around New Zealand that that um, give away the mini wool babe. So like the baby box, baby start, baby boxes. Um, bought a thousand wool babes from us last year in this yeah. size and also the Queenstown baby box project if you live in Queenstown you can score yourself a free one so like how, um, how old can the baby be um, um, once they kind of grow out to that size what size range does that cover the mini well this is called um, the zero to nine months um, it says height up to 76 centimeters so that's probably getting close to one year. And when we compared actually some of the other brands of Merino sleeping bags that advertised them as zero to two years were actually only about this much longer than our zero to nine months. So yeah, you'll get nine months at least of that. Awesome. Okay, is there any more questions, James, that I need to answer or shall we let these people go? They've right. been very patient. We have very well. quite a few questions on sleeping suits. Okay. Have, actually, yeah. yeah, and I wonder whether we should cover that in a separate yeah. uh, line. I think that would be a good idea because otherwise we'll be here for another half an hour. So <laughs> um, we'll start a new thread for questions about sleep suits. Um, the wool babe sleeping suit, our onesies, our zip suits, um, and the ergo pouch ones. And we'll get them all out and run through those early next week. Swaddling with a sleeping bag is a good question. Um, your options for that is you can choose a swaddle sleeping bag combo like this like if you if you're not sure if you're if you do you know with that question is it they have a baby is it transitioning off swaddling or can't decide which to do is, is it safe to use a love to dream under a wall babe? okay no <laughs> this is the short answer so um love to dream is a, a product in itself and it's really not suitable to combine with a sleeping bag like you can't really use a love to dream with a wool babe you know you could fiddle around with it and put it over it and pull it out the bottom but it's not designed for that um, love to dream have their own warm weight of love to dream um, either in the original with the wings attached or the 50 50 with the wings that zip off so if you use love to dream and you want to keep using love to dream then buy a bigger size or buy a warmer weight and that will be your safest option um, if you're not sure if you're going to swaddle or use a sleeping bag or if you want a quick and easy way to you know transition the ergo cocoons are brilliant for that um, I use those a lot sort of in that four to six month age with my kids when you know in the day they were still arms in and at night they would be in a wool babe or vice versa and then if you have used a miracle blanket a miracle blanket is the one swaddle that we think works really well over a sleeping bag. So miracle blanket, you can just wrap the arms. You can use it with um, with a wool babe or any of our sleeping bags and you do the arms over the bag. So you never want to put a swaddle inside a bag because it's the armholes which make the bag a safe fit. So once you don't have the arms securing it, you still shouldn't be able to jam that head in. It won't go. <laughs> It's fortunate. <laughs> um, but part of the safe design of a sleeping bag is having the arms actually out through the armholes. So that's why you don't want to have your arms wrapped and then the bag over the top. So um, we'll put a link to, we've got a video that shows Wool Babe with a miracle blanket over the top. I just sent it to somebody yesterday actually. Um, and that's our only recommended combo. Otherwise go Ergo Cocoon or go Love to Dream.
Cool. Is that everything? That's everything. I think we'll cover the sleeping suits. And the next one, I reckon, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if we covered the TOG rating. Oh, one so yeah. Second. Good point. Good point. What is a TOG rating? <laughs> okay. So TOG rating is a measure of thermal resistance to be technical. It determines or shows you how warm the sleeping bag is. So the higher the number, the warmer the bag. The lower the number, the cooler the bag. So a one TOG is the equivalent of one light blanket, approximately, not too scientifically. So this is like a one blanket weight. This is about a two and a bit weight. And then there's a fatter one. Where's the plum one? The plum one is a three and a half. Oh no, it's a two for two tog. Um, so there's a bit of variation. There's the a, higher there is the a number. Three and a half tog down there. I think this one's got sleeves on it as well. Oh, right. um, so this is even thicker. So the lower the number, the thinner. So in the summer we sell mostly 0 0.2, 0 0.5 togs. Your year-round bags are your kind of one, one and a half. Your warmest bags are 3.5. And that's just approximately. So then, the only other thing about TOG ratings is only half the bags are TOG rated. So anything with um, a filling um, is TOG rated. Generally the polyester bags um, and the 100% cotton no filling bags are all TOG rated. Anything that's merino is not TOG rated. And that's really because the merino behaves quite differently to anything else. 